Now to the drama playing out in rural Oregon tonight. The armed anti-government protesters who've taken over a group of federal buildings. Police are keeping their distance for now, hoping to ride this thing out. But many critics are asking, would the cops be handling the situation differently if the protesters were black or Muslim? ABC's Neil Karolinski is on the scene tonight. Tonight, a bizarre standoff in Oregon. I am 100% willing to lay my life down to fight against tyranny in this country. As several dozen militiamen, some openly armed, hold their ground at this federal wildlife refuge, which they took over while no one was here. And we found the man who posted that video inside. Do you fear that this could turn into something serious enough that you would not be able to return to your family? It's always that chance. Nobody, uh, I'll tell you right now though, nobody here will fire that first shot. We will protect ourselves, but that's, that's, not what we, any, that, that's not what we want, and I don't think that's what they want. The events at first glance might seem like this 2014 armed standoff between ranchers and federal agents in Nevada. Get back! Get back now! But there's no violence or confrontation here in Oregon. What there is is some of the same characters. In fact, members of the Bundy family from Nevada behind that standoff are at the center of this one as well. This refuge here is rightfully owned by the people. And we, um, we intend to use it. They say they're fighting for nothing short of the liberation of thousands of square miles of federal land, which they believe should be returned to America's ranchers. To say that this is all taking place in the middle of nowhere is an understatement. The nearest town is a solid 40 minute drive away. It is nothing but open, snowy fields like this. These guys are in the middle of nowhere. The group seized the unoccupied federal refuge Saturday, protesting against prison time for two ranchers convicted of arson for lighting fires on acres of public land. I'm going to jail for five years for 127. I seems like a bit of an overkill. Mr. Hammond! The pair surrendered at a California prison late today, distancing themselves from the standoff in Oregon. In the small town of Burns, the nearest populated area, schools are closed all week, residents growing weary. Police have turned the high school into a makeshift command center. It's totally disrupted our community. Our kids can't go to school. All of our federal and county and city our businesses are all closed down. It's been a, a real hardship for a lot of us. The way they're handling this is not the right way. They've threatened people in this community. They've stalked people in this community. They would deny it to your face, but that's a blatant lie. Tonight, public support wavering as the militia is skewered online. The hashtags Y'all Qaeda and Vanilla ISIS picking up steam throughout the day. Some complaining that the lack of law enforcement presence is a sign of a double standard. Look, the FBI, they know what's going on. They know that you have these largely white militias and they're carrying heavy artillery. You cannot convince me that federal law enforcement would react the exact same way if you were dealing with some folks who are Black Lives Matter activists. But the militiamen say their fight goes across color lines. God intended that his children be free, regardless of race, color, or creed. And, and, and I will stand with, with any man who will stand with freedom. The FBI saying only that they are investigating the actions of the militia. Tonight, the sheriff going a step further and urging them to go home. It's time for you to leave our community, go home to your families, and end this peacefully. Authorities say the few dozen hold up here mainly come from out of state and now have a name citizens for constitutional freedom. This is the sanctuary they've taken over. You can see their guard tower in the distance over there. And here you really don't see a lot of presence at all. And they have gasoline actually, fuel pumps for their vehicles. Inside, bunks the militia members sleep on, a woman preparing meals, ranchers pleading for others to join their cause. We need you to get here and stand with us. Whether you're armed or unarmed, you get up here. One of the leaders is Lavoy Finnicum, who traveled here from Arizona. He also says that he's willing to do what it takes to get the federal government to ease laws that he feels are too restrictive on ranchers. You love your wife, you love your kids, you give them a hug, and uh, yeah, if, if I see him on the flip side, I see him on the flip side. 
Lavoie comes from a long line of ranchers. This is happening throughout the West. Uh, I've met with, with ranchers in, in, in Utah. And they're getting pressed and pushed from every side. Police have been largely absent in this standoff, but Lavoie has been in this spot before. Joining rancher Cliven Bundy in that 2014 face-off with federal agents over cattle grazing rights. Get back! Get back now! For 20 years, rancher Cliven Bundy refused to pay rent to herd his cattle on government land, resulting in $1.1 million in grazing fees. So I have no contract with the United States government. Back up! You're gonna get Federal agents armed with tasers and dogs evicted his cows, seizing hundreds. Anti-government groups and armed militia members joining the fight, the confrontation turning rough. I just saw federal agents throw my aunt on the ground. Government officials concerned for their safety pulled out, leaving Bundy and the protesters behind. This time around, it's Bundy's son, Eamon, who is leading the charge. He says that his actions will be peaceful. The reason and the principles that we are here are based upon the Constitution of the United States. For Nightline, I'm Neil Karlinski in Burns, Oregon.